Hello everybody and welcome back to the farm, and a special welcome back to spring here in central New York. Relax for a second and enjoy this montage. This spring, however, has been anything but relaxing on the farm. I did manage to get all of my implements that I purchased over the winter brought up to the farm, and there they sat because of the rain. Days later, I was able to start offloading them, but as you can see from the sky above, the good weather did not last very long. Just a matter of hours, long enough for me to unload this trailer. A few days later was a repeat of the exact same situation. I had just enough nice weather to get the tractor loaded at my house, backed into its resting place at the farm. I got it offloaded and I brought a few additional tools that I purchased over the winter. And because it wasn't raining quite yet, I figured this would be a very good opportunity to try and get one of those implements that I purchased over the winter, the York Rake, attached to my tractor. Now of course I thought this was going to be simple, and I'll spare you the hour that it took me to get this attached. It was a small victory when the last pin successfully went in. Since I bought this York Rake, I was always concerned that it may be just a little bit too big for my tractor, and it looks like I might have been right. Now here's an implement that I brought up that I didn't tell you about and haven't shown you yet. It's a brush hog and I won this at a local auction for $250. I was very excited about this. This brand was selling on Marketplace and Craigslist anywhere from $1,800 to $2,400. So I consider this a huge score. Now I haven't tested it yet, but it looks halfway decent. It does look like that it had been welded and repaired here and there, but it doesn't have that typical circular pattern around the top perimeter that shows that a blade had impacted the metal and caused some damage. So I was very happy to add this tool to my collection of vehicles and implements at the farm. I consider this largely a successful winter of purchases. Because it's late May, I was feeling some pressure to get the field all prepped for both grass growing as well as the plants that I intend to plant in the field. So there's a bit of a learning curve with this York rake. No matter which way I angled it, I simply couldn't get the field debris to roll out of the rake. Instead, it was getting clogged in all of the teeth, and it took me hours over the course of just a small section of the field to both perform the raking and also to clear the rake. But the overall effect of the York rake was wonderful. It cleared all the weeds that were growing in the field and it did a great job of collecting the debris. 
The forks that I put on the front of the bucket also did a great job. It was very hard to pick stuff up from the ground with them. The forks would either dig into the ground and not pick anything up, or would pass right over what I needed to pick up. However, the combination of the York rake and the forks for picking up the bigger stuff really did a great job. A first pass around the field with both the front bucket forks for picking up the larger stuff and the York rake for clearing the weeds and the debris really resulted in a nice, clean field. What I did realize, though, is that this is a culmination effect. So you have to do this many times over the same area around the field over and over again to really break up that soil and to pick up the majority of the debris that's in the field. One pass with the York rake uh, along with the front bucket forks just isn't going to get it as clear as it needs to be. I did notice also that using the York rake does level out the field. There was a lot of inconsistencies from when I used the bulldozer last year and from just you know going through the winter but the York rake really did a great job of leveling things to some extent not as good as a blade or, or a bulldozer but it evened out all the hills and valleys and it made the field much more level than it was before the York rake had gone over it. Really the best way to see this is in a time lapse because you could really see the beginning of the field being messy and riddled with weeds and branches and debris and then after a single pass around an entire section you see the dirt and it's just a lot more clean. The before and after videos really do speak for themselves. This is just one or two passes with the York rake around a couple sections of the field. Now this ground is still rock solid compacted from the bulldozer so it does need to be tilled but it's a great first start. And of course, just when productivity seems to be increasing, a week of rain hits and all progress comes screeching to a halt. But once the rains passed, the sun came out again and I was surprised by a visit from Megan and Michael who came to help me deal with this gigantic pile of debris that I have in the middle of my field. If I'm going to plant anything, I need to get rid of this pile. The thing is, there's a lot more stuff there than we thought was there. So Megan and Michael spent four hours helping me cut stuff up, stack it on the bucket of the loader, bringing load after load out to the street. And the thing is, not much got accomplished with four hours worth of work. So it became very evident that if I had two months of four hours per day, I still might not get this all cleared out, either by myself or with Megan and Michael or any other people helping me. There's just a lot of stuff here, and this is an inefficient way to deal with it. So I started getting quotes for getting this pile professionally removed, you know, cut up into sections, loaded onto a dump trailer, and carted off site. And I was astounded to realize that some of the quotes were more than $6,000. And that's just not viable. This is a hobby farm. This is just something I'm doing for fun. I can't afford that. So after all that work, we simply ended up with not that big of a pile of sticks out by the road. So the pile's gonna sit for a while, I guess. I can't afford to move it, and I just don't have the energy to do it myself. But progress must continue, so I came back to the farm that night to get some work done, and my neighbor Jerry asked for a short tutorial on how to use the loader backhoe because he had some stuff to clear at his house. So while he was there, my cousin Jim, who's also my neighbor, stopped by and we all had a chat for a while. I didn't get much work done, but it was a beautiful night and it was a good way to relax and spend an evening. The next morning I decided to come back to the farm and try out some of the implements that I purchased over the winter, including this disc plow. But the problem was, as soon as I went to connect it to the ball hitch that I put on the back of the tractor, the entire bar that had the hitch receiver snapped right off. So since I was already in the field, I decided, let me strap it to the tractor, move it around, and see if it actually did anything. And unfortunately, 
it really didn't. It pulled okay, but all it did was create some razor sharp lines in the dirt. Now this may be because the ground is too hard or I didn't have enough weight. I don't know. How does a disc plow work? I've never used one of these, but this doesn't seem to be a desirable outcome of pulling a disc plow. So I moved it back to where it was parked and it tipped over and it got all bent and uh, this is just going to have to be a project for another day. Maybe in the fall I'll <laughs> try and sort this out. But I did realize that I should probably put the tiller back on and try and get some tilling done in the areas that I used the York rake in the field. But then I ran into a problem. I could not get the PTO shaft to connect to the tractor. I tried for about an hour and it was just at such a weird tight angle and it just would not go on. So I set the camera up and I figured if it was going to go on I was going to capture it on camera but unfortunately it did not go on. I was more than frustrated. I put this entire implement on and off probably seven times with no luck. I simply couldn't get the shaft on. Par for the course though, my awesome neighbor Jerry came over and it took us about 10 seconds for the two of us to get the PTO shaft on. And off we went tilling part of the field. As I previously mentioned, this field is hard like concrete from being driven over and over and over again by the bulldozer. So my neighbor Jerry wanted to jump on the tractor and have a few goes around one particular area to see if it would loosen up. And sure enough, after about three times tilling the same area, you were able to stick your hand all the way down in the dirt and have some nice soft fluffy soil, which was fantastic. Of course there was tons of rocks and, and debris and wood chunks, but it was loose enough to plant. Now, as we watch this, I want to dedicate this to my neighbor Jerry because Jerry and his wife have sold their house right across the street from my farm and they're moving down to Tennessee. I'm very excited for them because they're going to be around family, but what a huge loss it is for me. Jerry and his wife are great and I've enjoyed every second that I've been able to spend with them. They're probably the best neighbors you could hope for. So just a, a huge thank you to Jerry for all the help that he's been during the time that he's been here helping me with my farm. Jerry seemed to enjoy his time on the tractor. He didn't want to get off. Once you close those doors up, it gets pretty stuffy in there, especially as the temperature starts to rise, but it didn't seem to bother him. We managed to till about three or four different sections of this property and he was going strong, so I let him keep going. In the end, we did have a few casualties. A few parts of the tiller did fly off, and this was a little bit disconcerting because I know that this ground is rough. The tractor was shaking quite a bit. The tiller was shaking quite a bit, but things seemed to be going fine, and uh, Jerry did a great job tilling these sections. So the next day I came back to the farm, and the reason why I'm doing this day after day after day is because I'm realizing that the days are ticking down, and most everybody else has planted corn and even other crops, and here I am just now getting to tilling the farm. As you can see, I have some red flags and some painted on lines where I outline a gigantic section of this field which is going to be planting. The other areas of the field are going to be uh, an encircled area of grass, which will hopefully uh, set apart the planting field from the rest of the property. This is a hobby farm, so I don't want to turn the entire field into a planting field, at least not right off the bat. I want to get some practice done. So I spent hours over here breaking this up into sections and going over and over and over the same areas tilling it and it did loosen up so things were going really good however things stopped going really well at a very certain spot and I'm gonna zoom in so you could see exactly what happened and there it is everything just stopped the engine was still going 
and the bucket hydraulics were still going and the hydraulics to lift and lower the three-point hitch were still going but I could not go forward or backward in hydrostatic drive nor would the PTO turn on again so I thought well I don't know maybe something was stuck uh, inside the tines of the tiller and that was not the case at all but at this moment another cousin of mine his name is also Dave came by the farm so I turned the tractor off and uh, Dave and I enjoyed the nice evening weather for a few minutes and we chatted about the farm and about a whole bunch of other things so Dave wasn't here for too long but it was a nice distraction and then I had to get back to the tractor so the long and short of this is not good I ended up having to leave the tractor here in the field overnight because it wouldn't move and at the farm I didn't have stuff at that particular time to tow it out of the field so the next day I called a tractor place that is just down the street over here and I dropped it off and he said oh yeah I know exactly what the problem is here these TYM tractors of this particular year had a very funky drive shaft and they would break when under pressure and he said that the stress of tilling was enough to break the drive shaft now the bad part is the drive shaft is on back order for about a month that brings me into July and that ends my hopes of having a planting season or does it I don't know there's a whole lot more to come Stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.